Danny Flexen for Seconds Out. Delighted to be joined by Lee Selby, former IBF featherweight champion and hopefully soon to be challenging for the IBF lightweight championship. You've got your final eliminator all set now. George Cambosos Jr. October 31st on the Usyk Chisora card. You've waited ages. There's been a couple of um, postponements as well. It was going to top its own card in Wales. But now it's chief support on a huge pay-per-view show. Which do you prefer? Um, of course, I would like to to box back home, home in Wales. But like it's it's been a long time coming, so I'm just happy to be boxing, it's, especially under the under the circumstances that well the, the whole world's the whole world's under. I, I'm just glad to be fighting. How have you coped during lockdown in terms of ticking over, keeping your weight down, obviously, and keeping training? Um, luckily, I'm, I'm I'm always always training anyway, but um. I, I couldn't get to the boxing gym due, due to the lockdown. So, so a friend of mine and, and fellow um, professional boxer, my gym mate, Gavin Gwynn, he, he came to my house and, and built me a, a a gym in my house. So I've been working in there, working in there every day. That's handy. So <laughs> Very handy. <laughs> He's a man of many talents. But it's a struggle to try and keep the girls out of there, though. They, they always want to come in when I'm training and run in the box. It's, it's like a new, a new thing to them and a new, a new place in the house. So they want to run, out, run around in there and play about. How are your your daughters? They're they're very well, thank you. But back in school, now. <laughs> yeah, I bet that's a relief. Oh, it's lovely. It's nice. <laughs> I can imagine. Um, I read an interview uh, yesterday with Jamie Cox, and he said since he's moved yeah. to your gym, he's found you to be the most fit and uh, dedicated tra- uh, person to train alongside in in his career. He said, "Yeah, play a game of cards with him, and he'd still be desperate to win, and that's what makes him so good." Where, where does that competitive yeah. instinct come from? I'm not sure. Well, looking back, there was five of us growing up. To, I had two older sisters and two brothers. So there was always a bit of competition just in the house. That, that's probably where it stemmed from. Well, what's it been like having Jamie Cox um, back in the gym? Uh, you know, has that added something to the camp? Yeah, it's, 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 it's nice to have him in. And like, like we're, we're good friends well, we, we become friends through boxing. We're, we're good friends outside of boxing as well. So it's, it's nice to be training alongside him. And, and he, again, he's very experienced. He, he was a top amateur and, of course, a top professional as well. Now, we'll talk about um, Loma Lopez at the end of this because we're, we're going to do that yeah. for a separate video. But I do want to ask you, if the predictions are correct and if Lopez wins or well, whatever happens, he's likely to move up in weight. Yeah. Loma apparently going back yeah. down. Would you expect the winner of you and Cambosos to be elevated to full champion if that occurs? Um, I don't think so, no. No. I, I don't, I'm not sure if the IBA, IBF work like that. I, I, I think there's another eliminator taking place. I don't know if it's took place or it's about to take place. So I'd imagine the winner out of the two eliminators a boxer for, for the title, for the vacant title. Okay. Well, I suppose it gives you another fight at least, another payday, another purse. Yeah. yeah. Now, Shane, I'm just happy, like I said, to be fighting under these circumstances. Because there's going to be a lot of boxers, especially like on the small hall shows, that, that they're going to they're going to miss out massively, and and it, it, there's no telling how long that's going to, that's going to be for. In fact, like a lot of careers will be will be finished with it due, due to this virus. What's um what's it been like in terms of maintaining momentum? Because you had that long break after you um had the defeat to Josh yeah. Warrington, obviously grew yeah. accustomed to a new weight. You had two good yeah. twelve rounders last year. Um, yeah. Omar Douglas and then Ricky Burns, two good wins, but then you've had to have a long break yeah. again through no fault of your own. Well, that's, well about a year out, it's going to be a full year. October I'm boxing last, and I'm October I'm boxing again. But um, it's it's not the first time in my career I've had I've had long long spells before, and like I said earlier, I'm I'm always in the gym, so I'm, I'm always taking over. I'm always ready. And to be honest, the, the year has just flown by, especially during that lockdown. Like the, I was getting up in the morning. D- doing my training and then, and then before you know it it's like time to put the kids to bed like the, the time just flew by I, I don't know where they got where they went <laughs> a lot of people be watching this right. being like quite envious of that I think the day seemed to it's drag it's gone by yeah um, and like during the lockdown I was thinking how, how did I manage to get anything done through the day because the days were just going so quick Crazy. fair enough good for you I don't know if it was just me <laughs> yeah it sounds it just like me. it but no I'm sure I'm sure it's not um what do you make of Cambosos Jr.? I mean, he's got quite a, a thin record. You know, he's had he's had one yeah. half decent opponent in Mickey Bay, but even then, 
yeah. he's been inactive and, and some way past his, his prime, it's fair to say. Yeah. What, what do you make of him? Did you watch the Bay fight? Um, I haven't watched the full fight. I've, I've just skipped through it. And um, it, it was like a... It was like a neck and neck fight all the way through, and I think the, the knockdown scored scored in the win. Like we said, Mickey B, he's passed his best. I think he might have been 37 or 36, 37, yeah. and and inactive. And like when he was champion, I think he lost the the, um, the title in the first defense. So at his best, he won like like one of the elite champions, and it was a neck and neck neck and neck fight with him. And the the other guys in his record are like like sort of just padded records. So yeah. it's it's difficult to gauge on his record. But I mean, he's very confident in himself. Mm-hmm. Like you listen to him talk, you think he's the next man with Ali, which he's not. And um, I did share the ring with him only over four rounds back in, what I mean, 2018 or 2017, 2018, in, in the wild card. I, I, I spared four rounds with him there. Do you, do you, I mean, I don't imagine you take much from it, but do you remember much about it? Um, luckily, no. Because if I did remember, I know it would have been it would have been hard work. But um, I, I can remember watching him spy. He spied a, a Scottish a Scottish boy. It was an amateur at the time, just turned pro. Um, he spied him. He looked good. He, he like bloody his nose up. But the kid was a south boy. He's orthodox. And he throws a nice little right uppercut. Knew it was working every time for him. And then when I spied him, it was just like just like normal sparring to us. Is there anyone you haven't spied? Um, I haven't spied you yet. <laughs> oh yeah. I think we're. I think I'm particularly thankful for that, to be honest. But um, yeah, you said he's very confident. You're quite interesting characters in that you're both very confident in yourselves, but you're more low key about it. He's a bit more yeah. kind of brash and outspoken. I, I just can't. I, I couldn't get myself to like be outspoken like it's, it's just embarrassing. Like I'm not like I'm more reserved. Yeah, but but that confidence it's, is still there. You can tell. Do you know what I mean? But you you don't kind of make a big yeah. deal of it. Well, if you're really confident, you don't need to like talk about it. You, you know, you've got it within you. You're confident within yourself. Confident in yourself, so you don't need to talk. That's true. How do you think coming over here will affect him? Because normally it'd be a bit of a worry coming over to the UK, fighting a Welshman yeah. here, but there's no fans. So there's, there's no fans. So it, it don't it don't it levels it up massively. It don't really matter where the fight is. Uh, like if I was going to Australia, I wouldn't be bothered because there's no fans. There's no there's no support. It's it's just a fight. To be honest, it's sort of like sparring. Do you think you'll thrive under those circumstances then? Because you love a spar. You I don't spar know. at the top level. I've seen you spar at St. Joe's, do you know what I mean? You don't take it yeah. in I'm not sure. I don't know what's going to happen. It's, it's, it's new to me. Well, it's new to everybody. I'll find out in a couple of weeks. How do you think you'll cope with being in the, the bubble and not being able to leave your room for a couple of days? That that seems to me more challenging than the fight itself in some no, ways. That, that's, that's quite nice for me. Oh, yeah? To chill out. It's like, usually fight week, that's all I do. I just lay on my bed. I just just rest as much as I can. Get down to the weights and just, just chill out. So it's just a different bed. I, to be honest, I, don't, I, don't, I don't leave my room. When I'm away on, in, in the fight hotel, I don't leave my room unless it's to train or to eat. Now and again, I go for a little walk, but I don't think that'll be happening for no. this one. <laughs> You'll have people like, dragging you back to the hotel. Yeah, yeah. Um, what what about future plans? Obviously, all this goes well, win the yeah. eliminator. Then you, like you said, the IBF will probably mandate you have to fight someone else for the vacant title. Yeah. Do you see yourself yeah. going further through the weights, or are you staying at lightweight now for the four? Um, I stay at lightweight. I stay at lightweight. I want to. Yeah, I jumped up two weights. I, I couldn't go on number one. But we've talked about this before, and if you are, well, I could, but at that top level, they're just too big and too strong, and the weight above. Would it ever be an option to drop down to Super Feather if you wanted to become a three weight world champion? Um, possibly, yeah. If, if there was a fight there, then I, then I fancy that we would have to the fight of one, was it one thirty? Yeah, and we've talked before. Yeah, I, I take- Sorry, a little bit of a delay on the thing, um, but we've talked before about you becoming the first ever two time champion for Wales. Um, obviously, yeah. Joe Calzaghi won a light heavyweight, but it was a ring belt. It wasn't a, a recognised yeah. big four belt. Well, How much does yeah. that mean to you, making history in that way? Oh, it's massive, isn't it? So I, I'd, I'd be remembered forever in, in, in boxing, in this sport. You, you, can't, you can't buy that. Can you? When you were growing up as a boxer, who were the kind of Welsh boxing idols that you looked to then? It'd have to be um, Kalazaki. He, he was the main one. And my, my friend, um, Robbie Regan. He was, he was doing well at the time, world champion. 
Um, well, a lot of the worst fighters. But, but the main the main guy was uh, Muhammad Ali. He he was my favorite. And I probably because my dad was always watching him. He was always on the TV. And like I could just sit and watch him, just just talking. Them on them on the boxing, just just talking. He, he just he just distracted me. The people like down the street or people on social media ever still call you the Welsh Mayweather? Because I know that was a thing started um, when I was at Boxing News. I did see the other day someone tweeted it. Who started? You didn't start that rubbish. I don't think you? it was me personally, but it was definitely when I was at Boxing News. I think it might have been Tris Dixon. I don't want to blame him unless yeah. he wants to take credit <laughs> for it. But I'm, I'm thinking. I get some stick for that. People think I, I'd call myself that. I wouldn't call myself that. No, no, but that's why I remember at the time everyone was like, oh, he's so cocky calling himself yeah, that. It was, a, it was a Boxing Enough. News. It wasn't even the headline on the main. Pa- it was on the front cover, but it was at the top. It was on the top, yeah, yeah. on the top border. Yeah. And we, we, we caused it, basically, I think. Cause yeah, all the trouble. Good to know it's lived on. Yeah. Um, I wanted to ask you as well about your brother, who surprisingly yeah. for a lot of people retired at the age of just yeah. 31 um, back in yeah. June. A lot of people are calling it the, the biggest kind of waste of talent, if you like, in the professional game for yeah. a long time. Were you surprised, or I suppose you knew in advance of time, but when he told you that he was retiring, were you surprised? I, I, I knew in advance, but um, I agree with that. He's one of the well, the biggest waste of talent I've seen. Because at, at his best, between the ages of, say, like 15 and, um, say, 18, 19, he was brilliant. He was the best I've seen watching him live. He was brilliant, beating, beating top guys in the amateurs. I mean, brilliant. But um, it takes more than talent. I mean, that's that's kind of what I wanted to ask you as well, is that he got to that certain age, other things come into play, temptations, whatever yeah. you want to call them. He succumbed to an extent, and so did you for a short period, and then you got yourself yeah. back on track. What, what's yeah. been the difference there? How did you manage to do it? And obviously he's had more issues in that regard. Um, I think I just wanted him more, I think. Tired of not having nothing. Yeah. But then he's had that same upbringing. I know. Like I said, I, I, I'm a son of Do you feel he's the more um, naturally gifted? Oh, yeah, definitely. Definitely. So it just shows Some of the that, stuff he does. Some of the stuff he does, you just can't teach. So it just shows then how important that, that discipline and that dedication oh, yeah. is. It goes back to what Jamie Cox said, that no one's more disciplined than you. I see you. You got to be well to be the best. You have to you have to train and act like the best. Even if you're not, if even if you're not the best, pretend you are and train like you are, and that, that's what makes the difference. I think that's a good tip for any aspiring uh, boxers out. Mm-hmm. And that, that that's what's got me through. Just always been in the gym, always training, and always giving hundred percent. Great stuff.